Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new entitled people stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, Why Aren't You Listening To Me? Are you deaf? Yes, yes, I am. This came up recently in conversation and made me laugh a lot so I thought I would share so hopefully someone else can get a kick out of it. Also, I would like to add that despite having a rocky relationship with my mum at the time, I'm glad to say it's a lot better so I can laugh about it. Growing up, I was introverted from the get-go because I was bullied and preferred reading, but my mum hated the fact I wasn't girly. I didn't want fairy tale books, I wanted encyclopedias on bones and autonomy. I didn't want to wear pretty dresses etc, I wanted to wear jeans and baggy shirts. I didn't even get into makeup until I turned maybe 19. 20? Whereas my mum was that parent that always looked done up to the nines. So, having a daughter who rejected all that well, we clashed a lot. My mum has always been very big on respect, however, she was also the person in our family who others got sent to be straightened out when they were being a lot to handle but because of this, she would flip at the slightest thing she perceived as us being rude, disrespectful etc. So, because of this, in my family, everyone loved babysitting me because I was good kid, but my mum would always be like, why is she so good with you but is always so rude to me? I wasn't being rude, and even then, it would upset me and make me pull away from her which again, she would see as disrespect. Her favorite thing to complain about was that I ignored her, like, all the damn time. I would get grounded so much because she had apparently shouted on me and I didn't hear her so she would assume that because I didn't answer, I was ignoring her. I cannot tell you how much this used to piss me off because my brother, the actual problem, and golden, child would get left off the hook all the damn time. It got to the point when I was about 12, I came home from the library telling my mum that I wanted to be a boy so she would treat me the same. 12 year old me used her library card to get gender reassignment information and gave it to her. She flipped her goddamn lid man, still funniest thing I've ever witnessed. So, after basically being grounded for a good maybe. Four months on and off with a few days in between, my mum goes mental on me because I didn't bring down my laundry for her coming back to put on screaming at me, yelling, telling me I'm the worst kid etc etc. And I'm just staring at her because I don't even know what's going on. When I asked her if I responded when she shouted, she just stopped shouting and looked at me confused. Why would I ask such a ridiculous question? Well, we had agreed that unless I respond to her, I haven't heard it. Did I respond? No, because I didn't hear her. When I pointed all this out, she locked me in my room screaming that she was getting me tested for being deaf. I had this all the time, she would say I was at it and when I tried to explain I wasn't, she would shout that she was getting me tested so she could put a stop to my problem behavior. Well, that was the last straw for her because three days later, I was getting tested for my hearing because she had enough. I cannot tell you the smugness in my mum's face when we went, she was going on and on saying that I was ignoring her, pretending I couldn't hear her and was just being a problem kid and she was sick of it. So, she was getting me tested so once and for all, she could basically have something that proved she was right. She couldn't be wrong you see and since this had been doing on for a good two thirds of a year at this point, she was done. Well, they tested me. Not only am I partially deaf in both ears, but I also can't tell what volume I'm talking at. Yep. Not only was I partially deaf, but I was also basically partially ducked with it. Because this was another complaint, that I was always shouting when I got excited or just talking and I would get really confused because I was like, I'm just talking normally whereas sometimes I would be near whispering and again, didn't realize. I cannot tell you how much satisfaction I still get to this day when I saw her jaw hit the floor when they came out with the results. My mum was so shocked in fact, she made them do it again because apparently, 12 year old me, faked it. I faked the full thing. So, they done it again, same result. She couldn't believe it and for the first time I remember seeing it dawn on her, how she had been treating me and I had been telling the truth. That quickly went away though when her face went scarlet as I asked, does this mean you're going to stop grounding me and locking me in the room when I don't hear you? I was quickly hurried out the room at that point though but the people there looked shocked which was pretty funny. On the way home, she barely looked at me and bought me a McD's. I've never let her live it down, it makes me laugh so much to think back on. 
The next one is titled, Mother decides it's time I get married, to some random guy and not my boyfriend. Oh boy, I finally get a chance to show off my parents' entitlement. This one was so fun to find out about. A little necessary background, I am currently no contact with my parents and siblings and have been for over a year. Extended family I am okay with and spend a lot of time with. I currently live with my boyfriend, which my entire family is aware of but don't know much. We are also Desi, Indian, my boyfriend is white. For Christmas, I visited my aunt and cousins to drop off presents, it was a socially distant exchange, but I stayed a while to chat about things. Whenever I see my aunt, she tends to give me important updates about my parents and immediate family. For example, I knew my mum broke her arm or that my brother and his wife moved closer to home. Things like that. So, my aunt had a little tidbit she wanted to share with me before I headed out. So, your mum has a proposal for you. Apparently, a family friend had reached out to my mother, not knowing about our no-contact situation, and thought that her son would have been a perfect match for me. I literally know nothing about this guy, but my mother apparently rushed ahead agreeing with this friend. She sent my photo and information and that friend loved me apparently. My mother then called my aunt, sent her the guy's photo and information, and cried saying she didn't know how to get in contact with me to share the good news and would she reach out to me and show the photo. My mother kept stressing that he's a good boy from a good family, and we know this person and that person and how it'd be a great match and he lives in Chicago so I could be under my sister's nose one sister lives in Chicago while married and oh wouldn't be so wonderful. My aunt responded with okay yeah sure, and just didn't really give my mother an opinion. While speaking to my aunt about this, I was incredulous. She is all for mending my relationship with my family but understands and respects my space. My aunt is well aware that my boyfriend and I live together so she took what my mother said with a grain of salt, but oh my god. I'm just appalled by my mother and what she thinks is okay to say about me to other people. A couple of things I want to point out since I'm commenting a few of the same things. 1. I'm not going to meet the poor guy my mother is attempting to set me up with. First off, he's in the US and I'm in Canada, COVID aside it's just not safe right now to cross the border. Secondly, it's cruel. I'm not going to be mean to someone who's innocent in this situation, despite how crazy it is. Third, my boyfriend is aware of the situation and he thinks it's funny. Two, my mother's entitlement comes from thinking she can do something as drastic as send me a potential proposal, when we aren't talking and haven't been for over a year. Not the fact that she's doing that, a lot of Indian kids have dealt with some kind of proposal situation in their lives. It's specifically because of the no contact situation. 3. My aunt is awesome, and I love her, she's not snitching to my mother or oversharing any information about me. She always asks me what I'm comfortable with saying to my parents. Currently if anyone asks about me, her default is that I'm fine and she leaves it at that. She has my full confidence. 4. I'm not going to break my no contact to complain about this situation to my mother or anyone in my immediate family. It happened, I thought it was really entitled, and that's it. I don't need to say anything to her, there's enough talk going on about me. I've tried to answer whatever comments come in but damn there's so many. When I have a chance, I'll try to write up the chronicle of what happened at my cousin's wedding, it was insane. Thanks everyone. The next one is titled, Beluga Caviar. You don't have it? This is a story from 2015 back when I was a meat manager. I was recently reminded of this incident while explaining a similar topic to a fellow customer. As any person in a retail position knows, the crazies come out near the holidays. Those customers that can't be reasoned with no matter how much proof you show them. This is one of those stories. A bit of info, in my own time I'll cut up wild game, deer, elk, fish in exchange for a share of meat. So, I have a few game wardens on speed dial to make sure the kills and tags are legal. Pertinent to the story. Around Christmas of 2015 I was preparing prime roast orders for the holidays as I basically had the past few days, when my meat clerk said a customer was looking for a form of caviar that he hadn't heard of before. I went out to see what help I could offer. M, tall, blonde, 40-ish, Karen cut shoulder length hair, two children, rude from the start, oh good, perhaps you can help me? This employee has no idea what he is doing. Op, yes miss, what type of caviar are you looking to order? M, I'm looking for beluga, sturgeon, caviar from the Caspian Sea. 
I bought it here a few years ago and it was amazing. I haven't been able to find it anywhere. Op, oh, ma'am I'm sorry, you must be mistaken. We have never carried beluga caviar. Last I heard beluga caviar has been banned in the USA since 2005. There was a hybrid farm certified in FL 2016, EK1, full volume, mum look at the fish. Now sticking his fingers against the glass case, M, be quiet. Can't you see I'm talking? Back to her full volume, that's impossible. I picked it up here a few years back for $100. You can't bullcrap me. Op, oh, ma'am, please keep your voice down and refrain from using harsh language, this is a family-friendly store. Ma'am, when Beluga Caviar was last sold in 2005 it was at $400 to $600, ounce. Once again, we have never sold Beluga Caviar. Perhaps it was a different sturgeon caviar. We have some that are at the $100 price range. M, I don't ducking believe this bullcrap. I know what I bought. My husband is on the city council and I'm going to tell him about this and get you shut down. Op, at this point I walked away to call security. She had left when I had gotten back. I didn't think much of it afterwards, just another crazy customer. A few weeks later the same Karen came back but this time to gloat. M, I came to show you that we were able to get it. The price was ridiculous, but we have photos showing it is the real deal. She had photos of not only the fish that was caught and killed for the eggs, but video of three men catching it and gutting it. The weight, cost, shipping ticket, proof and pictures of them eating it. She was also here to place an order for a roast. I asked the clerk to get the order. Ask for an address under the premises of it being over a $200 order. I went to the back and called the game warden, fish and wildlife. I reported to the store manager what I had been shown and had the approval to report it. Game warden came in asking for the M's info and it was freely given. I heard from the same GW a few months later when calling about a few Chinook salmon a man brought in. M was given a search warrant and was found to have illegal beluga caviar in their freezer after lab tests I'd guess. I was told that they were given a fine of $1,200 for the caviar but still had a pending trial that could charge them up to $25,000 in jail time for their actions that lead to the death of an endangered species, international shipping of illegal goods and a few others I don't quite remember. I offered to be a witness but as they had the pictures, product and messages between the sellers and M. Ed they had plenty of evidence for a conviction. I wasn't given any info on the results of the trial afterwards. If I could remember her name, I'd try looking it up since it's likely public record. Edit, I forgot to mention. Ed did work in the city council but not as a seat or such. He is or was a manager in the public works area, wastewater. I can't imagine that he was able to keep that job as the government, city higher-ups don't generally have a large criminal background. The next one is titled, M thinks people in wheelchairs are convenient bag holders. Not my story, but I mentioned this subreddit to my girlfriend and she told me this story and thought it would go perfectly here. I've talked about it in posts on other subreddits, but she's AC 4 fifths quadriplegic due to a diving accident last year and can't move anything below her shoulders. She goes to a weekly physical therapy appointment at a clinic to try to stimulate recovery, which is where this goes down. She and her parents get there a little early and they're inside talking to the doctor while she's using the voice control software on her phone to check messages. The door to the clinic slams and out walks M and her son, a teenager wearing a letterman jacket with his arm in a sling, apparently after he had a PT session. Cast, GF, star of this sordid tale M, der IK, injured kid. Actually, seems super chill? So, M comes in hauling a big bag of something for her son, along with her purse. They plunk everything down only feet away from where GF has parked her chair, she says the room was near empty, and M begins loudly fiddling around with the large bag. She drops her purse several times, then turns around to where GF is minding her own business. M, here, hold this for me a minute. Without waiting for a response, she just drops the purse into GF's lap and turns away before she can react. She can't move her arms to sweep the bag away, and she says she was in shock at the moment. GF, um, excuse me? You can't just put your bag in my lap. M, oh, I'll just be a minute. GF, it doesn't matter. Just because I'm in a wheelchair doesn't mean you can just drop objects on me. You wouldn't do it to a random person sitting in a chair, would you? 
M, look, don't get politically correct with me. My son is disabled too. IK, mum, I'm not disabled. I just dislocated my shoulder. Give me the bag, I'll hold it. M, no. You're injured. It's fine where it is. She's not doing anything. GF, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Look, take your bag or I'll get my parents over here. M, fine. I'm done. Was that so hard? Smirks as she picks up her bag, I bet it felt good to be useful, didn't it? They walk out as IK briefly turns back and mouths, sorry, as they leave. GF wants it known that she has never been so frustrated with her paralysis as when it kept her from slapping M right in her smug face. The next one is titled, Entitled Parent Barges Into To Gas Station Makes Someone Cry And Call Us Workers, Headless Chickens. If today couldn't get any more worse, it sure did. I start my morning at a gas station at 6 a.m. My manager who doesn't work weekends changed the roster on Wednesday. So, we had someone who wasn't meant to start till 1.30 turn up at 6, we sent him home. The guy who was meant to start at 7 didn't show up till 10.30, his previous toaster had him at 12 p.m. start not 7 a.m. And the guy who was meant to be there at 10 started at 9.30 to help us. When I got there this morning there was three of us the other two started at 5 a.m. One of them had his birthday party yesterday and was high on drugs and came into work with zero sleep. When he went on his half around 8 a.m. he didn't come back. Leaving me and one other to cover the shop for an hour before someone turned up. It was busy, once we got our third person in, the other one went on his half. Our manager stuffed up by changing rosters and not telling anyone. We managed to survive till our manager came in and two more staff. Now let's get on to real story and cast I, me, op entitled parent which we will label as, Karen, nice person NP new employee, she's been here for one and half weeks. NE tall employee, Tay 5am guy so, this happened just after 1.30 today. One of the guys who started at 5am had just clocked out as he just finished for the day, I was in the break room coming back out after having a water and one of the new employees is calling me over to deal was a customer. Me, hello what seems to be the problem? Karen, hello, I've been in and gotten this number to ring you manager and he isn't picking up. My daughter came in 30 minutes ago and got treated poorly. I want to speak to your manager in charge. I said I will try and find him, but it turned out he left ages ago. He came in at 11 left at 12.30, me, I do apologize but he isn't on sit at the moment, have you tried to leave a message? Karen, what so are you telling me that there is no manager here? Are you all running around like headless chickens? Me, I do ensure you that we are trained for what we have been doing but anything in the office we have not. Karen, so, what I'm hearing is that if there was a fire and the place burned down who would you ring? When your manager going to be in next? Me, we would ring the emergency line and then ring our manager on his personal phone. Our manager will be in on Monday, he doesn't not work weekends. Karen, okay then, give me his personal number. Me, I cannot do that due to privacy. Karen, will then wear the 5am guy who's manager today? One of the new employees mentioned the 5am guy who's our administrator, he is not a manager, me, the 5am guy has clocked off for the day and has gone home since he started at 5am, also he is not a manager. She then starts repeating the same story, what if this place burned down? Blah blah blah. NP, hey excuse me Karen but you can't come in here push in front of the line and make a young girl cry we were very busy, and NP witnessed the whole thing. As soon as I heard, make a young girl cry, there was only one other person working other than me who was a girl. I leave Karen to deal with my crying co-worker as she still tries to serve people. The 5am guy was still in the office but didn't want to come out because he knew the truth. The Karen's daughter did a drive off the other day and he had to do the manual fuel correction to get her to pay it. 5am guy just said what he tells everyone with a drive off in our systems. I go back out to once again that Karen has to call our manager and leave a message. I also pulled her up on the fact that she made one of our staff members cry and that this was the ending of her first week here. Karen, I just remembered who served me, it was this man here. She says pointing at our Tay me, ma'am he has only just started working for the day. Karen, listen here there is a photo out back with my daughter and my license plate. Then she tells me her number plate. 
Me, I'm sorry, I cannot get that for you as it is privacy information on that paper, and you are not the person in the photo. So due to regulations I cannot give that to you. Karen, go get it, put it right here. Then you're not handling it to me. You're showing it. Me, once again I cannot do that, it is a breach of policy. She got fed up with me following the rules and left yelling. Your manager is going here about this. I was glad once she left. 30 minutes of saying the exact same thing is annoying. The 5am guy was still in the office. We had a talk about what happened and both of us couldn't do anything related to this store, only our manager can. Edit since I forgot something. When Karen was explaining loudly and repeating the same story over and over again, she looked at one of the cashiers who had just rolled his eyes. Karen, don't roll your eyes at me young mister that and some other cruel words him. I had to shoot daggers into his eyes to be quiet before he started reacting. 